Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This week it's all about academic friendships. Welcome to our little space here on YouTube. My name is Caroline, I am a university physics lecturer here in the UK. And last week I was sitting on a train coming back from another university where I'd been the external examiner to a PhD student and it struck me how important academic friendships are. I'd had a really nice couple of days. So I travelled up to the university, I had stayed overnight because our examination for the students started the following morning, I'd examined the PhD student, and then I'd been taken out for lunch with my academic collaborators and friends from the different university. And it really made me think on the way home how important these academic friendships and connections are within your career as you go through your own kind of personal academic journey. These are people that might influence your kind of your research direction. They might become colleagues that you work with on particular collaborative grants or kind of projects together. They're the people who might be on conferences who might invite you to take part in things. And these are also the kind of the friendship group that you'll turn to, maybe when things are getting challenging with the research or you need motivation to stay within a particular research area. It's that friend, academic friend network that you might lean on. For some of us, I think the word networking is like fear driven. It's like, oh my goodness, I don't want to do that at all. Um, it doesn't have to be as intimidating or you know as, as worrisome as you think, but it does take a bit of skill and practice, um, especially the first few times that you have to go up to people that you don't know at all or you've got a very loose connection with to try to strike up a conversation. So one of the best ways really to make academic kind of connections within your community is to go to conferences, you know, to watch talks, to go to the conference poster sessions, and then to talk to the people after their particular um, presentation or their particular poster. And again, you know, it can be quite scary if you feel like you're more of a junior researcher to them, um, but you can just open up a conversation with, hey, I found your work really interesting. Could you please describe to me in a bit more detail X, Y, or Z? Or, you know, hi, I'm, I'm new to the area, but I really liked the method that you used on this project. I'd love to know more about how you kind of came about to use it in your research. And most likely academics are going to be very happy to talk about their work and you'll strike up a conversation. Now, some of these conversations might be very short and they might not go very, very, very far. And other conversations, you might really get on with that person. And actually the conversation becomes a longer chat. Maybe you go for a cup of coffee together. Maybe you end up having food together at the conference. And that is how you make that initial contact with a different academic collaborator from potentially another university. So it is a little bit scary when you start doing it if you're not a naturally outward going, want to chat to everybody person. Um, you can also approach people via email. I think potentially that's a little bit harder because you, if you're going to do a cold email to somebody where you don't know the person at all, you do really need a reason to get contacting that person in, in the first place. I think at a conference you can have more of a natural chat or conversation about something or an area. You might get invited to meetings, to workshops in your research community. You could be asked to help at these meetings, you know. You could be one of those people that carries the roving microphone out into the audience for questions. And again, that's the great way to get to know the conference organisers, to get ready to know maybe the person who's chairing your session and to start to form these kind of academic friendships. And so you'll have them with people that are kind of like equivalent, I guess, in terms of kind of grade and where they are in their career. So be that PhD students or lecturers. And they also form friendships with people who are more senior to you and more junior to you. Um, and these friendships will have different kind of, I guess, impacts in you as you go through your career. Once you've formed then this initial connection, if you think, OK, I'm actually going to get on with this person or that we, we've got something in common, you then want to nurture that academic either connection or collaboration um, by email potentially or by sending them, you know, something that you've seen that you think, oh, actually, I saw this and I thought of your research area. If you see them at a future meeting or conference, you might go naturally up to them to kind of strike up a conversation again because you've already met once. Um, it is a little bit of work, you know, when you start forming these connections and you do have to work at it. You know, you might meet somebody and then decide never to contact them again because it's not something that you need or you didn't really kind of hit it off. Or you might meet somebody and think, hey, this could be a really good 
potential future friendship and then you do need to put some effort in in order to nurture it and to grow it. And so why then do we do this? Why do we try to make academic friends? Um, firstly, it makes going to conferences, meetings, workshops much nicer if you know some people in the room, you can have a chat to them over the lunch. Um, if you've got a conference, there's often like a half day where you have like an excursion or a trip or a break away from the actual research. And it's quite nice if you know people at the conference to be able to spend some time together, share food together, and maybe go and see a little bit of the local area that the conference happens to be being held at. But academic friends can also really help shape your research. You know, if you're working in a research topic and they're working in a complementary research area, you might exchange ideas, you might come with like maybe shared project interests. You could say, I'm going to have a student work on a particular topic and you have a student work on a particular topic and then we're going to meet and we're going to collaborate in that shared space together. Um, you might have disagreements with your academic friends, you know, about the research and the right direction of travel for your particular research area. They're just an immediate community of kind of trusted people that you can go to to talk to about your research. And it's that kind of network of people that won't only shape your actual maybe research, but that might create opportunities and invite you to take part in things. So, you know, you might have somebody say, hey, there's this meeting coming up. Have you thought of attending? Or if they're on an organising kind of committee, they might say, hey, so and so would make a really good chair for this session. And you might get invited to be a conference chair. It's, it's people knowing who you are, knowing what your research is, knowing what, what your personality is. Um, you might get invited to talk at their university in their department. And um, that's a really fun thing to go up and do. You might be asked to be an external examiner, maybe for an undergraduate course or a master's course, or maybe for PhD students. Um, and all of these things are lovely because they get you to know their research, to understand a bit about what their area is working on. Um, but it's also really useful for you. So if I'm an external examiner for one person, then I need people to external examine my PhD students. So I need to be able to reach out also into my network of contacts and say, hey, would you mind coming back and being the external examiner for my students? And so it is really kind of like a, a give and take. Um, it's great if you've got academic friends, but you also need to be a good academic friend yourself. And I guess what I mean by that is if people are inviting you to go to their departments to give talks or they're inviting you to go to meetings to give like maybe a presentation or to act as an examiner for their students. If we always say no to those invites, then at some point we may stop receiving them. Um, so I'm not saying that you need to say yes to everything. Far from it, you know, there is a time and place to say no, you know, and workloads can be very high in academia, so you, you literally can't take on everything that everybody would like you to take on. However, it's useful to think, okay, how are my academic friends and colleagues perceiving me? Am I viewed as somebody who always says no, or am I viewed as somebody who's very reasonable and does things when they can within their schedule and gives back into their research community? Um, or are you viewed as somebody who always says yes? And that may not necessarily be a, a good thing if colleagues always think from other universities that you're going to be somebody easy, um, not to like, pick on, but to fill gaps or maybe do activities. You want to be, I think, on that kind of middle ground where you say yes to some things, no to some things, but that you are perceived by others to be you know, adding and contributing within your research community or research space. And these academic friendships might evolve, so you might find yourself not only chatting about the research, but chatting a bit about your lives, what's going on with like friends and family and hobbies, or you might find that the academic friendship stays very much focused on academia. And social media, I think, is blurring that boundary a little bit. You know, so I've got some academic friends who I'm also connected with on social media. I've got other academic friends who I'm not, and I only kind of interact with them face to face on the telephone or through email. And I think that bit really then just kind of comes down to your kind of your personality and how much you connect with the other person and also what is appropriate. You know, it might be appropriate for me to friend certain people, maybe who I'm working either directly with on something or we've had a shared particular common interest. Um, you might be more likely to friend people, I guess, at the same point in your career because you have more kind of shared experience at that kind of point. Um, 
I have got rules about kind of social media interactions with students, completely separate video, which I can try to find and put in the comments. But yeah, I think that is a bit of a, a grey area at the moment, is where you draw that line in your academic friendship and how much you first personally feel comfortable sharing about your life and how much that you need to share about your life or if indeed want to share about your life. But that aside, I still think that academic friendships, your academic network is an invaluable and essential part of your career. And actually I found that both in academia and when I was back working in industry. But I'd love to know your thoughts. Do you have a big academic circle of friends? Uh, have you got a much smaller kind of group of trusted individuals that you'll kind of go to and work with? And um, how do you find it best to form these academic contacts within your community? Let me know in the comments. I really do enjoy reading our different perspectives on how we're finding university careers and university life. Um, in the meantime, have an awesome week. If you've not already, do hit subscribe. This is a free channel where we talk all things, you know, academic and university related with a bit of industrial content thrown in every now and then. But yeah, have an awesome week. Look after yourselves and I'll see you next Monday. Bye.